Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Banished Private here and I'm happy to present you the new video series that I'll be showing you all of the ships from Naval Action. One ship per video and I'll be going from the smallest ships to the biggest. But this is going to be an exception because in this video I'm showing you the beautiful ship of the line. Just recently introduced into the game Christian the Seventh. So this is the little bit boring part of the video. First, I will give a little background, history background about the ship. Uh, then I'm going to show the statistics, guns, and uh, stuff like that. Numbers, lots of numbers. So if you're not interested, then you can jump straight forward towards the more interesting part, which is combat. How the ship performs in combat, some shooting, shooting, sinking, and pew 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 pew, stuff like that. So let's begin with the historical approach. Christian the Seventh is of course the Dano Norwegian ship. Uh, it was one of the largest ships commissioned by the Dano Norwegian Navy, a 90 gun second rate. Um, it's also the last beautifully decorated king's yacht. It was named after the, of, of course, after, after the Christian the Seventh, uh, Dano Norwegian king uh, from the Oldenburg dynasty. She was a prestigious uh, symbol of the crown at sea and was uh, to be used as a flagship in the Dano Norwegian fleet. It was later converted to a double decker coastal defense ship uh, and she fought at the Battle of Copenhagen, which is often uh, considered to be Nelson's hardest fought uh, battle. Basically, it was turned into a block ship uh, with 58 guns. Sadly, the fate of the ship is, uh, it burned in 1801 during the battle, it burned and later sunk. Also, to be noted, there have been multiple, well I know at least about two, uh, maybe even more, ships called Christian the Seventh, and two of them, <laughs> to make it no funny, two of them have been Danish second rates, 90 gun, and uh, you know having exactly the same name so this ship that you're looking at right now this is the christian the seventh commissioned in 1767 or launched in that day uh, sunk in 1701 so if you're looking for more information this is exactly what you need to precisely type in to not get some uh, different version of the christian now Let's move maybe to the uh, numbers, lots of numbers as I stated. So, oh, I forgot to mention also one thing. Uh, in the 1799, uh, the ship was renamed to Provestin, something like this. I don't know what it means. Maybe someone from Denmark can explain. And this is the, the moment it was turned to double decker with the 58 guns as a block ship. Okay. Okie dokie, now we're moving to the more uh, numbers, numbers, numbers. So we're looking at the Christian here. So let's start with the guns layout. Basically the guns layout is almost the same as the Bu Centaur Victory, possibly. Uh, so the lower deck is 42 pound long guns. Uh, the middle deck is 24 pound longs. Upper and top deck, the weather deck, uh, can fit. 42 pound carnites, which is decent, really decent. If you don't want to use carnites, you can use 12 pound longs. So the upper and weather deck have exactly the same guns, guns layout as a victory. Because victory is uh, one of the ships that can fit 12 pounders on the upper and top deck. And very, very important thing. Christian the Seventh is the only second rate in naval action that has bow chasers that's right you can mount 12 pound long guns on your bow or 68 pound carronades and you can have four 68 pound carronades on the stern not sure about the longs what size of them you can fit but that doesn't really matter that much so compared to Pavo, which doesn't have bow chasers and sec and Busentaur, which also doesn't have bow chasers and Pavo and Busentaur if I remember correctly, have only two stern guns. This ship has six chasers, other second rates have only two. 
So that's really going to be a great ship for open world and small engagements. Um, it's going to perform maybe a bit uh, worse for the large fleet engagements. But let's first discuss the statistics like speed, turn rate, HP, uh, thickness and so on. So looking at the speed, the base speed of the ship is exactly 11.0 knots. So the fact is that this is the fastest second rate in the game. It's faster than the Pavel, faster than the Bucentaur, by about 0.2 knots, almost. Has a great turn rate, really awesome turn rate. Um, the base turn is not 303, um, the base turn rate is something like 2.7. 2.8 around this around these numbers uh, which is very close to the Bellona crew the same as uh, Pusentor and uh, farther on the side thickness it's the most thick uh, second rate in the in the game has about one centimeter thicker side than a Pusentor if I'm not mistaken, two centimeters thicker than a Pavel. Mm -hmm. So, considering all of these informations, the fastest, the biggest number of chasers, uh, the greatest turn rate, you know, so many positive things, so many pros. So what are the cons of the ship? Okay. Because they need to be some, otherwise the ship is a broken and overpowered and uh, so on. Well, the side HP is not impressive. I mean, the ship is uh, more tanky than the Bellona, but I think it's softer than the Pavel, and for sure it's uh, softer than the Bucentaur. So that's one of the downsides. Uh, the other one is hold. It has less hold uh, space than boost and tower for sure, maybe less than a Pavel, I'm not 100% sure on that. I also don't think that the mass thickness is the best. Uh, I'm not exactly sure about that, but it feels like Christian has weaker masts than boost and tower. Okay, the BR for now is 450, which is exactly the same as a Bologna, and pretty close to the boost and tower. So, I think that's enough that we covered from the boring numbers. Numbers, numbers, and numbers. So we can probably move to the combat part, which is going to be more interesting, I believe. Actually, before going to the combat, let's actually take a closer look at the ship itself. <laughs> because I've mentioned it's a beautiful ship. So, it would be good to actually have a look at first, a first glance. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the bow figure presents, but it's looking really awesome. If you guys know what sort of person it is, god or symbol, let, let, let us know in the comments because I'm all curious and I'm, I know others people will probably be asking also. Uh, the sides have really nice curves. I mean, the ship is pretty big, it is, it's almost similar size the victory it's also high in the water uh, so it's going to be an easy target to hit looking at this turn it's very well decorated we're going to have a much better look at the ship uh, in the battle because we have limited angles here uh, that we can look at the ship so it's just going to be a brief uh, overview and uh, yep that's basically how the ship looks like I'll also give you a little look from the, the very top. And let's undock now. We're currently located in the Grand Turk, in the Turks and Caicos area. And I'm hoping to find some pirate NPCs, I guess, to attack. Let's do the ship in PvP battle against the Bellona. And it performed really well. I was fighting a uh, fighting uh, Yordi from the Phoenix clan. A very good player from the Pirate Nation. Okay. Uh, first look, there's just the Prussian NPC. I'll be moving towards Lorimer's and farther on towards Pirate K, hoping to find some uh, Pirate NPCs. 
if we can find anything there is a uh, enemy pirate player what I did not expect that and why is he sailing east maybe he's going for a sealed bottle well I'm in a very big ship so it's not going to be very smart to chase a pirate he's probably faster than me but let's try let's give it a shot basically from here he's sailing east which is towards nowhere one of the guesses is that he has opened a sealed bottle the shipwreck is located somewhere here so that might be his uh, heading but looks like he has vanished on the horizon yeah I guess we don't want to waste our time looking for some pirate vessel that has vanished on the horizon let's carry on and look for the eye I'll pause the video here I mean like I will cut it and I'll get back to the point where I find something worth the attacking <laughs> okay after five minutes we've managed to find uh, pirate trace brick that's right <clears throat> it's not going to be a huge fight against a trace brick but I'm not sure if I want to spend half an hour looking for a worthy NPC fleet to engage so let's first give it a shot of a trace brick and I'll be able to peacefully present you the inside of the ship and better angles views in the actual in the actual battle instance because in the open world the models I believe are more simplified or maybe not as detailed as they are in the actual combat so let's engage and during combat here we are oh, that's very very close you want to have an extreme build of the Christian, the guns layout. You can even go two decks of the Ignorox on the two bottom decks, the bottom and middle one, and the two top decks as carronades, which would be extreme DPS setup. Only good at a close range, but that can really punch super hard. I know, I know the Ignorox are rare now, they're worth a lot but I know players that have thousands of them or at least hundreds I have, I have right now 148 crew for sailing I have 691 crew for gunnery which is pretty sufficient I would say uh, the ship turn rate is really awesome it's turning very nicely let's lock the carnage it's actually not, um, it's showing the side so I'll go for the hull And let's give it a punch <laughs> that's a really big punch to get down to less than 50% structure and also crew shock let's try now to take the mast on the on the tracer brick shouldn't be hard should take only one broadside really okay testing shot and there we go must both take it down 17 hits and I'm just using only the two bottom decks so it's getting pretty dark it might be turning the stormy weather as we're passing through maybe not through but close to the pirate reinforcement zone okay finally I just came across the mercury pirate fleet came across Razor Brick and the Spanish uh, decent size second rate fleet I'm not going to sink them all so I'm, I'll basically disengage from a fight at some point but I will show you in combat how it actually looks like fighting big ships okay let me engage nothing's around no one should be joining. Entering combat. This is probably going to be like five. We'll see in a second. So odds. 
one to six. Yep, I'm exactly right. <laughs> so you can actually compare this ship exactly to other uh, second rates. Here you can have a look at the Boo Centaur that has exactly three decks the bottom, middle, and the weather deck. The Pavel with the four decks, the weather deck that has just two guns. So if I'm not mistaken, uh, Christian the seventh has the the greatest firepower from all of the second raids. You can have a look at the spanker of the Boo Centaur, which seems to be much larger, in my opinion, compared to the spanker of the Christian, which is pretty simple and small. The mizzen mast of the Christian looks small, only one square sail on the mizzen. It's also small on the Pavel, you can see, very simple. On the Boo Centaur, on the other hand, has two square sails. Speaking about the jeeps, two jeeps on the rear, I mean jeeps, the triangular sails, and they have lots of different names, but generally they are called jeeps, it's a very, very big simplification, hope no one's gonna hang me for that, but uh, on the rear two, middle three, and uh, on the bow spread also three, so the same as a uh, tower and the same as Pavel. So probably the difference is just in the shape and size of them. Yep, that boost and tower is punching me hard. I will shoot back at it. And let's have a look how hard I can punch it. Killing lots of crew. Yep, that's pretty much equal punch back. Considering that the boost and tower is uh, more firepower than I do, and the Pavel is getting hard, much harder. Also losing lots of crew. So yeah, compared to these ships, Christian looks much bigger. The turn rate, really awesome. Just giving you an example of how the turn rate here performs. Ship is really turning nicely. And I'll start a Hu Repair because they will punch me for a while with their big guns. I think I will kill the Boo Centaur because it's on the upwind position of me. All of the Pavels are sending downwind. Loading my guns on the left side. Turning off the Caronades for the farther shooting. Some testing shots, good penetration, shooting everything. Yep, this Boo Centaur seems to be pretty tanky. And these Pavels are hurting me a lot. So you can see that actually, as I mentioned, Christian is not a very tanky ship. Uh, mine is pretty basic HP, it's the quiet talk without any HP mods like Bridgetown or Planking. It's not very sturdy. So it's taking a beating from other second raids and you can feel that. So as I said, there's simply too many eyes for me to handle them alone. And you can see how the ship actually performs against the other second raids. They are much more tanky and they can punch Christian really hard, it's gonna feel the punch. Other than that, well, in my opinion, the ship is going to be a great brawler, great turn rate, great speed, sailing abilities. So, it's really worth trying. It's going to be a great competitive ship against third race for sure. You're still mm -hmm. watching, aren't you? Okay, so you've given this 20 minutes footage of Christian the Seventh. It's not enough for you. I've got some extra 
uh, combat engagement against the small and sized shallow pirate ships. I know it's nothing crazy, they're just small shallow boats that just die from one or two broadsides, but I was very unlucky finding a decent size NPC uh, fleets I could take on my own. So like, uh, I can't fight against six second rates on my own, and I couldn't find anything better, so here we are. Uh, very basic engagement, I tried to use the most interesting parts of it. So like the masting, uh, shooting hull, and so on. Here I'm going battle sails, preparing to loot the Mercury that's about to sink. And uh, well, the ship is performing greatly. Uh, I really love it. Um, I don't know about use of the cannons on the two highest decks because that kind of limits my possibilities for the long range engagements. The 12 pounders could become really handy if used on the two highest decks. Uh, but then, if the ship is supposed to be a brawler, it would really fight a lot at the close range. So, I don't know, I really love the coronades. Like in this situation, just with use of the coronades, all of the longs are still reloading. I can give a nice punch into that little, little brick. And uh, surprisingly, take down both masts. Well, my opinion is that we're not gonna see a lot of Christians at open sea because this is supposed to be a gift ship, not craftable, as far as I'm aware. Um, so players will be scared, really scared to sail out in them. But one fact, this the best looking second rate and possibly the best looking ship of the line in the game with so great decorations. I uh, haven't mentioned one thing that's the first Danish or Dane or Norwegian ship in the game. So actually a Danish nation has finally a representation in the Caribbean. We still don't have any Dutch ships in the game Possibly one could say that we don't have any pirate ships in the game. Uh, we do have the pirate frigate. We do have some... Sh is it? Well, the Requin is a French ship. Yeah, but some schooners, schooners, or however that's pronounced. I'm sorry if I say it incorrectly. Um, but, like, people are requesting, for example, ship like Queen Anne's Revenge to be added to the game. Or several other. Uh, so thanks around for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think about Christian the Seven, the ship performance and how it looks like. If it's looking cool or you don't really like the look of the ship. And uh, let me know if you have any suggestions uh, for my future videos about the other ships in naval action. This is finally the end of the video and see you till the next episode.